Here. But it is the first night for here to hear marmalade. Yeah. 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 We need to call out for marmalade. Marmalade! 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 So I thought it would be good. This is the first poem that I memorized. Um, but it's not the first time that I've ever recited it. It's the first time I've recited it for here, here. Here, here. That's enough of that. The um, funny little story about when it was first went to press, um, it was, he was going to self-publish it, and he sent this small collection off. It was going to be a little chapbook. Uh, to his father in Toronto. His father took it to a friend. They put it in the press room. And the press boys, it caught their attention, and they snatched up all the copies before it came off the press. So it immediately had to go to a second printing. And rapidly from there went to allied publishers in the United States and in England. This is a, actually a first edition of Ooh. The United States copy, second printing, still printed in 1907. So it gives an idea how rapidly it, it uh, spread. Um, but one of the reasons to bring this up is thinking about all the fantastic poetry that we're hearing tonight, yeah. straight from the lips of the poets that composed it. And I can't help but think ponder, imagine, any one of those poets, or all of them, <coughs> publishing their poetry, people buying it up, reading it, reciting it, and enjoying doing so over a hundred years from now. Mm -hmm. ah, ah. Mm -hmm. I think, from the poetry that I've heard, I think that that can happen. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. The, um, by Robert W. Service. The shooting of dangerous Dan McGrew. A bunch of the boys were whooping it up in the Malamute saloon. The kid that handles a music box was hitting a jag time tune. Back at the bar and the solo games that Watching his lock was his light of love, the lady that's known as Lou. Going out of the night, which is 50 below, and into the den and the glare, there stumbled a miner fresh from the creeks, dog dirty and loaded for a bear. He looked like a man with a foot in the grave and scarcely the strength of a louse. Yet he tilted a poke of dust on the bar and called for drinks. For the house! Mm -hmm. It was not a good place to stay. So we searched ourselves for a clue, but we drank his health, and the last two drank was dangerous to him. There's men that somehow just grip your eyes and hold them hard like a spell. Such was he, he looked to me like a man who lived in. <laughs> well, <laughs> with a face most hair and the dreary stare of a dog whose day is done.
the silence you most could hear, with only the howl of a timber wolf and you, camped there in the cold, a half-dead thing in a stark dead world for you mad in a muck called gold, while high overhead green, yellow, and red, the north lights swept in bars. stars. And hunger not a belly kind that's banished with bacon and beans, but the gnawing hunger of lonely men for home, and all that it means. <coughs> for a fireside far from the cares out are, four walls and a roof above, and oh, so crammed full of cozy joy, and crowned with a woman's love. A woman dearer than all the world, and true as heaven is true. scarce could hear, that you felt that your life had eluded clean of all that once held dear, that someone had stolen the woman you loved, that a love was a devil's lie, that your guts were gone, and the best for you was to crawl away and die. It was a crowning cry of a harsh despair, and it thrilled you through and through. I guess I'll make it a spread in his ear. <laughs> Say me, pay me, pay, and my eyes were blind with blood. The thought came back to an ancient wrong and stung like a frozen lash. The lust arose to kill, to kill. Then the music stopped with a crash. And the stranger turned, and his eyes they burned in the most peculiar way. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt. He sat, and I saw him sway. His lips went in and a kind of grin. And he spoke. His voice was calm. Now, boy, says he, you don't know me. And none of you give a darn. But I want to state, and my words are straight, and I'll bet my poke they're true, that one of you is a man most foul, and that one is Dan McGrew. And ducked my head, and the lights went out, and two guns blazed in the dark. And a woman screamed, and the lights went up, and two men lay stiff and stark. Pitched on his head, and a pump full of lead lay dangerous down and grew. All the man from the creek lay clutched in the breast. A lady, that's known as Lou. These are the simple facts of the case, and I guess I ought to know. They say the strange was crazy with who? So, I'm not so wise as a lawyer, guys, but strictly between me and you. The woman that kissed him and pinched his 